What is up, Buckeye Nation? It's been a while. We're busy men, but it's been a while. Ohio State football with Scarlet and Great right here on YouTube. But today, we're not talking football. Today is all about the other main sport at Ohio State. It's about hoops. And I got my main man here. Good, godly, family man. Man I'm proud to call my friend. Man who knew my father. I'm very proud of that as well. Brandon B. Moses. How are you doing, my friend? I'm great, man. I'm great. And yes, uh, backstory, y'all. Corey's dad, he's the one who linked me and Corey up. That's he's the true. one who got us together, and now we're inseparable brothers in this Buckeye thing. So <laughs> absolutely, yeah, shout out to his pops, man. Rest in peace, pops. Absolutely. And he loved you, Brandon. He said oh, nothing but great things about you all the time. Um, that's probably probably why I say, Corey, you got to talk to this guy, Brandon. Great guy. <laughs> so, um, anywho, man, we're talking hoops today, B. Some big news coming out of Buckeye Nation. New basketball coach. I got to admit, when he first got the interim job, I didn't think it was going to happen. But, I mean, what were your initial thoughts? When Did you think he had a shot? or? Well, I'm going to just be straight up real with you. Um, initially, I did not. In my mind, and just a quick backstory, I got love for the Diebler boys. Um, you know, John and Jake had the pleasure of uh, meeting Jake and spending some time with him some years ago. And uh, me and John um, had our dealings with some ministry things with the, the Mike Red Foundation some years ago. So uh, I'm biased towards them as far as love for them and respect for them. But with that said, I was still like, I don't know, because my thing was, yes, they're doing well. And this was early on in their run. Mm -hmm. They're doing well. But is this more of a buzz they're writing off of to show the world? I'll show you. And, you know, just kind of, you know how your back's against yeah. the wall and you're playing well and the coach is fired. And I was just wondering, like, is this is this sustainable, basically? And, and you know, the finish that they had has shifted my thinking. And I can dive into that in a second. But initially, the answer was no. Go after a national guy, especially coming off the Holtman era. We don't need to take no chances. Let's get us a big splash higher was my initial thoughts. I ain't going to yeah. lie to you. I agree. And you know what? After they beat Purdue, I mean, you're happy, of course. You're rooting for them to win. You want Diebler to get the win. You want the team, the guys to get. They've been through so much in the past month, two months or whatever it was. Good yeah. for them to get that win against that big-time team. But, you know, you, you think to yourself, okay, they had something to prove, chip on their shoulder, like you said, a buzz. So right. you're like, okay, let's not crown Diebler just yet. I mean, we're happy about it. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't rooting for them to lose at any point. I know you weren't. Right. You and I were in the group right. chat both saying, no, we want them to win every game. I don't care. What right. the what the what happens after that? But they then they lose to Minnesota, and I kind of started thinking, okay, <laughs> we're back to normal, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, but then you just ran off five wins, <laughs> you know, almost got us on the cusp of being in the tournament, really. Uh, and maybe yeah. you could argue got robbed by yes. the in the only game. You yes. could argue terrible officiating. That, that, I'll be honest with you, the officiating makes college basketball sometimes unwatchable. It's just horrible. Yeah, agreed. Um, but anyway, uh, they announced today they didn't even like. I mean, they they said it was a comprehensive search. Yada yada. They got to say that. I'm I'm like, how, Brand? I'm going <clears> to <throat> ask you this, brother. You you're a smart guy. How comprehensive was that search in the middle of the season? I mean, when everybody's coaching, how? I mean, could they have done any more than just call and ask if they had interest? I mean, anything else of that? I mean, I think it was as comprehensive as it could be under the circumstances. That's you know, I'm sure they I know they reached out to, you know, the Dusty Mays and the Sean Millers. And I mean, they they made their calls and all that. Um, but you know, like you said, during the season, it's it's a little harder to really get down and, and drill down into uh, to numbers as much as you want to and more details, you know, because mm -hmm. things are still kind of uh, hovering in the air. But I mean, Diebler and all in the meantime, he was. It, it wasn't it was the wins, of course, but it was mm -hmm. how they were winning. It was how they were playing. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we clearly saw a difference in play from the players and the connection with the players and um, and just the how competent Diebler was showing himself to be as a coach from game to game. And we can get into that in a minute as well. But of course, comprehensive as it as it possibly could be under the circumstances. Yeah, if, you know, some play, some people are going to uh, – I'm going to go on to click on – we want to hear you from you guys in the comments section. What's your reaction to this hire? I want to get – be your initial reaction here because I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm okay with it, but mm -hmm. 
but obviously it's not a big splash, but it's really the wait and see approach, I'd imagine. What's what's your initial hire? Are you you good with it? Are you kind of down on it? Are you just I mean, look, we all know you have a relationship with the dealers, as you just said. Uh, so it's not this it's it, obviously this is not a personal thing if you are down on them. I I right. mean I'm just we're just asking for truth and honesty and what you what you got to say about it. Yeah, so I, I'm not down on it. I mean, initially, like after I kind of came around from saying, hey, it's not him. So, you know what? Okay, I will be okay with this. The one contingency was a three-year deal. A three-year deal, that gives him a chance to prove himself with recruiting as a head coach and sustaining, you know, the, the level of play and beyond and actually going up uh, in these next couple of years to earn an extension is what I was thinking. Um, they came out with the five-year deal, mm -hmm. which I started thinking like, okay, that's not what I, in my mind, what I was thinking should have happened, but... I can understand them, as I mentioned in the chat earlier, giving him a five-year deal doesn't allow the other schools to say, see, why would you want to go to Ohio State? They don't believe in him. They only give him a three-year deal. They mm -hmm. must not believe in him that much. Come to this school. So I can see them doing five. Um, but the other thing that's that's kind of hanging on that, that that's helpful is it's. I'm pretty sure, I haven't seen the numbers yet, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't have an incredibly stupid buyout like Hopeman had. And that whole yeah. contract extension, which was garbage. Mm -hmm. um, I And this is not hindsight. Like, I never liked that extension. I don't um, think anybody did. That, I did not see one Buckeye fan who was cheering on that extension. That just yeah, didn't, I mean, it that's didn't make it didn't, No right or no beat right. It didn't make any sense at the time. Nothing. None. No sense. Yeah. None. So the five-year deal with obviously a lesser buyout salary issue in case things don't work out kind of balances things out. So I'm cool with it. I'm not. I'm not down on it at all. It's basically like, hey, he gives us a chance to retain this team from uh, from hitting the portal, which gives you a nucleus of players who are going to come back next year and be a veteran team. Mm -hmm. He's uh, he's known as a good recruiter. We just got an update that uh, the kid, what's his name? Um, Mobley. Was it Mobley? Yeah. And I'm about to tell you White, right now. I think, I think his name was. Yeah. John Juni Mobley. Mm -hmm. He said he's sticking with his commitment. He's a four star guard. Um, so I think it gives us the chance to to keep the nucleus we have, keep the recruits and build momentum. Um, so listen, man, I'm I'm cool with it. It's definitely a wait and see. It's definitely a gamble, but I don't think it's an outrageous gamble. I think it's a you know what? Let's go ahead and ride this and see what happens. I think we got a good shot of this being a really good decision. But we're going to see. Yeah, I agree. Uh, look, for all we, we that's the thing. It's the wait and see approach, man. It, it's like. Don't be and you can be you can feel not feel good. You, I understand reservations people have. It's not it's a guy who's like what 30, 31 years old or whatever he is. Yeah. He's he's young, maybe older than that. I'm sorry, I might be thinking of John, but um, uh, he's young, but um, he's never been a head coach before. Right. This is a pretty big program to get your first head coaching job. You know, he was uh, from Valpo. He's an assistant at Vanderbilt for a year. Came over with Chris Holtman, and he's been a Buckeye fan his whole life. He's a Ohio kid, born and raised. Um, nothing. I mean, I, look, the team clearly played better under him, but again, it's eight games. How do you know? But like you said, there's continuity in that. Mm -hmm. Now I did, you know, I got a real quick side note. What do you, do you wonder like if he, the whole season when we were going two and nine and like January and February, Jake is just fuming inside. Like there's so many things I would do differently <laughs> if I were the guy. And then he got a chance to do them. And this is where I credit Jake. He, when he got the interim job, he wasn't a babysitter. He's like, no, we're doing things differently. Yes, yes. And he started playing freshman uh, a lot more. I don't know why Holtman just cannot play freshman. It's just like, oh, it's like he's seventy five years old from another era that where they just didn't <laughs> play freshman. It's like so some of these kids can play and they need to be on the court. Devin Royal looks like the next Buckeye great right so far. You know, I mean, yeah. Uh, Scotty Milton, nice player as well. I mean, but. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm getting all over the place. I understand that. But let me ask you a question. Is what a, I agree with you about the five-year, probably low buyout, probably low salary, like $2 million a year, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, wh and I do agree with your point, by the way. you got to show that you're all in on the guy or the guy can't recruit as well. You know, Right. It is, it's not just NIL. That you're right. Teams got to tell, hey, we, they believe in their guy. Um, so let me ask you, what did you notice about the team? You're Y'all hey, don't know this. B's a hooper, man. He knows ball. Okay. Uh, he, he. By the way, he's like six foot eight or something like that. Right? <laughs> I ain't that tall, but hey, I, when I'm I met you, kid. when I met you in person the first time, I was looking up. I'm six one, and I was looking up. <laughs> so <laughs> he's got some height. 
Um, but anyway, he knows ball. What did you notice about the team that changed under Diebler's leadership? Yeah, so a few things I noticed. And, and just as a side note to your point about playing freshmen, Holtman will play the obvious superstar, the sense of ball and, and, you know, and those guys. But Malachi Branham, yeah. R- exactly. But, you know, Devin Royal, I, I love this kid, man. Like he's he's from Pickerington here locally. Mm. And I know some people kind of question the offer. He's kind of a tweener, you know, like he's not. Some people uh, think the ball guard. doesn't really matter what their spot is, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His IQ, I'm very impressed. Royal family, if you're out there listening. Your I son, I'm yeah. very impressed with his IQ. I hate low basketball IQ from players. I don't care how athletic you are. If yeah. you if you're low IQ, I can't stand you. But Devin Royal is very savvy out there. He's smart. Um, he has a nice touch on his shot. You can tell he's not lost. Mm-hmm. Um, he'll get more, you know, uh strength as he gets into the weight program um and all that other stuff, but Really impressed. So, yes, playing younger guys like Devin Royal, giving them more minutes, working them in, not just playing them out there just to play them, but mm-hmm. actually running plays for them yeah. to, to basically let them go to work. And Devin Royal has done that and has scored, and he's just getting better. So the lineups, playing freshmen, the lineups, there's been moments in games where he's went big mm-hmm. that maybe Holtman probably wouldn't do. He would probably just keep banging Holtman his head against the wall. going big. Oh my it's, goodness! It's like his kryptonite was getting a center who can guard the rim. It was driving me insane for five Ridiculous. years, six years, whatever it was. So one notable game was the Michigan State game with you know the buzzer beater three. Yeah, he Dale brought Bonner. the bigs in for a stretch, and it really kind of turned the game around because Michigan State was winning the physical battle at first, but that that rotation of bringing the bigs in really kind of set the tone and turned things around and kept us in striking distance. So mm-hmm. um, there's that. Also, the out of bounds plays. I know it may not seem like like that big of a deal to some people, but that's a huge deal Hmm. when you're competent and being able to draw up a great play uh, in those situations when you need a bucket. Uh, He's been really great at that. You can just see him making in-game adjustments. I love his energy running up and down the court. Like he's in the game. Like he's actually out there playing, like, you know, kind of like telling guys what to do and and the play and -hmm. and all the other stuff. Um, But he's very competent. He doesn't look like he doesn't belong. That's the one thing that – that's the other thing that kind of helped me. I'm Listen to me. I'm so excited. That's the one thing that kind of helped convince me that maybe this – maybe Jake is, is is cut out for this because he showed his chops. Them, them players, man, they, they responded to him. Their level of play went up, and you mm-hmm. saw his his basketball, his coaching acumen was was on display in this stretch where they won these, won these games. And that Illinois game, they should have won that game. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm I'm trying not to go off about that. If you go look at the, the discrepancy of fouls and call, like it was ridiculous. Oh boy, number zero was just coming out court, pull, pull, pull. This like no call. They acted like, like he was Shaq about? or LeBron. Like he could just do what he wanted. It's ridiculous. It's like, so anyway, yeah. but yeah, I, I'm I'm very very impressed with what I've seen from Jake down this stretch. Absolutely, and you know, there's one thing I notice is um, the attitude of the team changed and what do i mean by that look at the michigan game those boys went to the basket yes i hate you say you hate low iq basketball and i'm totally with you on that i hate chicken basketball (laughs) people who won't go to the rim because oh i might get hit or you know the guy the big guys that no go there i don't care if you get blocked once in a while it's gonna happen you're not gonna win every battle but go put that ball in the hoop with authority and let them know you know one of the most famous games ever, Kentucky versus Texas Western. You know that game, obviously. Yeah, the uh, old uh, Glory Road movie. game. Yeah. yeah, Glory Road. And it's a true story, by the way, that the idea that that uh, uh, the guy slammed the ball first couple of baskets, just slammed it hard into the basket and scared the bejesus out of Kentucky with that, and the whole arena felt it. That is still true. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta assert your authority and like that. I love it when I and I was loving that game because I was I've seen Bruce go to the basket, I seen Roddy yeah. go to the basket. I was like, good, everybody jam it down their throat. And that didn't happen under Holtman. It just didn't. Yeah, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I never saw it, you know, or never felt it. Like, man, this team's just fired up, ready to go. Um, but under Jake. Seems like he's just got more of that fiery attitude that gets the team uh, going and gets the team more energetic and gets the team more willing to assert, assert their authority. Love it. 
uh, that alone makes me want to give him a shot, to be honest with you. Because if I start yeah. seeing that year after year, an athletic, uh, hardcore ball team that actually will take it and jam it down somebody's throats, God bless it. I, I want to. I'd rather you. I'd rather you go down swinging than not swinging. I hate that. Sure. I don't mean swinging by shoot chucking up threes. By the way, right? I hate that. Low talk about low IQ basketball when people just chuck up threes whenever they get the ball. You know, they don't do anything to get an easier shot. Um, yeah, definitely the the team definitely played just better fundamental basketball as they went down with Jake Dealer. It's amazing he turned it around that quickly. So he must yeah. have been just had some. But again, it's like a Pat Riley situation with Paul Westhead, isn't it? Like Paul Westhead gets fired. Pat Riley gets to assert what he wants to do with the team. I'm yeah. not. It's not on that level. Don't get me wrong. I get it. But it's it's almost like the assistants like, oh, thank God. Phil Jackson was an assistant <laughs> before he took over the Bulls, by the way. Um, it's like, OK, now I can't to do what I what I've been wanting in my head to do for in ba- right. practice. So um, anyways, moving on. I'm sorry. I'm ranting now, but no, you good. You good. I also was wrong about his age. He's 37. My bad. <laughs> I just looked it up. That's what I was doing. Yeah, that makes sense. Late 30s makes sense. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know why I was thinking 31, but maybe that's John. But um, anyway, that being said, do you speaking of John, really quick before we get on to other stuff with him and Jake and the now taking over, uh, do you think do you could, could you see John now? He's a he's yes. on the Butler. <laughs> yes, John's <laughs> coming back. I'm I'm speaking it right now. D blur three blur is coming back to OSU. It's just a matter of time. What do you think his role will be as an assistant? Because, you know, obviously guys have had offensive and defensive and they've had like, you know, just take care of the kids type thing. Like Terrence Giles has done. Scooty Penn has done. I don't know. I mean, shoot, Jake is the the head guy now. He can do he can whatever he wants. He could be the top assistant if if he wants. But uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, though. I I don't know what his role is at Butler with uh, Thad. I yeah, no I'm about to say, I don't know either, but I know he needs to be uh, the head shooting coach on teaching yeah. them how to shoot uh, in the proper shooting stroke. Um, but One of the best three-point shooters ever. Yeah. Right. Yeah, man. So um, I'm curious to see what happens, but I think it's no question. It's just a matter of time when he comes back. Like, come on, man. That's the, that's the no-brainer of all no-brainers. You got to have guys you trust on that staff, and how do you trust somebody more than your, your little brother there who actually played at Ohio State? Uh, that's a kind of the irony. John actually played at Ohio State. Jake didn't, right. and Jake's now the head guy. <laughs> right. uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> the Diebler boys might be leading the Buckeye program. Who knows? We'll see here. Um, I'm not. I'm not. Hey, if it works, I ain't against it. I mean, what would the wait and see? Like we said. So, yeah. uh, so he was like six and two in eight games, right? And the team looked obviously much better. Did you see that video where they showed the team, uh, showed him signing the contract with the team? I thought that was a nice touch for what it's worth because. It, He's right. If without them, he doesn't get this. Right. Um, right. For sure. Uh, I did see that. Yep. What did you think about that reaction from the team? What I think, me personally, because I know there was some some criticism that the players didn't look that excited. Um, but honestly, in my opinion, in this internet, social media age, and also mm-hmm. them being on the inside, I don't think it was a surprise. I it think wasn't. they already I think they already knew what was happening. Like they knew on, before like, the internet knew, by the way. That is no way. Exactly. They didn't. So yeah. It's it's it was more to me. It came off more like a, a formality of, hey, you know, Bjork is here. He's mm-hmm. you know, he's all, you know, glimmering with glee and the cameras are out like, come on, they know what's happening. So I don't think they were going to manufacture some fake shock and all like, no, yeah. they knew it was just a matter of like, OK, that's our guy. Because here's the thing, people that's criticizing their reaction. Here's the bottom line. There's no better cosign to him being the coach and how they've played for him. That's, That's the true. co-sign. That's I'd rather true. see that on the court than some fake backflip after he gets announced as the coach. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they already knew. It it's wasn't like, a surprise. Zach Key ain't doing no backflip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, he'll probably do the finger guns or the yeah. raise the roof. But anyway. <laughs> it stinks. I, ho- I do hope they get an NIT bid because I do want to see some more Buckeye basketball. I think they deserve an NIT bid. I mean, I get they didn't get in the tournament, but I think they deserve yeah, to play a little more ball. I want to see Jake get the ball a little bit more. Um, but uh, that being said, I don't know why Michigan State gets in the tournament. We can't get in the tournament. That's kind of man. Stupid. Don't even get me started, man. I'm I'm. First. No, go ahead. I'm we got we, we got some more show to go. Go ahead. What do you <laughs> listen? I'm frustrated. I, I'll be honest with you, and I and I know we went from no chance. The you know uh, you know pee on the fire. This is over. To we actually so there's you're saying there's a chance like all the way down to the last second like but I'm still frustrated that we're not getting in the tournament like I just the way this team has been playing the way we got screwed against Illinois 
I'm just like, I'm a little bitter about that because I wanted to see these boys. How how dope would that have been if they would have gotten to the tournament after this run, man? Yeah. Like and went to something like the Sweet 16 or something like crazy like that. Like, whoa, right. wait a minute. Imagine right. Jake I mean? in his first little interim job getting past the first uh, two rounds like Holtman could never do. Man. And, <laughs> man, everybody been screaming, it, give Jake the job. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's I'm a little frustrated. And, yes, they're definitely going to get the NIT, NIT bid. But it's still it's it's frustrating um, that they weren't able to get into in, into the NCAA with the way they've been playing, man. But I'm going to watch. They Listen, mm-hmm. those those games, those reps, all of that is going to be crucial and critical for them to go into the offseason with some, you know, some good uh, experience under their belts and get ready for next year. Absolutely. And uh, Jake is the head guy. See what it does in the NIT. Then the pressure's really on. We get to see more of what Jake's about because then you just sign the contract, buddy. You got to have a decent showing in the NIT. You can't go out, you know, can't go out quick. Um, it'd be it'd be a little interesting, but I do hope to see some more basketball from the basketball bucks. It just stinks that this is, you know, we're not going to get to see Jameson Battle, who was one of the top three players yeah. for him all year, get to play in the tournament like he deserves. Um, but we got, hey, I'm going to say it right now. I, we got screwed against Illinois. I don't really care. We should have beat them. And I'm, it's, you can, you can, Illinois fans can jump in here and say what they want. I don't really care. Um, what do you, what would be a successful run for next year in your mind with Jake Dealer's first year? I mean, obviously not, we're not talking national title, but, um, maybe not even Big Ten title, obviously, but what would, to your, to your mind, what would be a successful first year? I'm going to jump into that, but real quick, Illinois fans and haters, stats from the game. Illinois was last called for a foul at the 5-minute and 44-second mark Mm -hmm. of the second half. 27 fouls, total fouls, 27 fouls for Ohio State, 13 for Illinois, 32 free throws for Illinois, 13 for Ohio State. Listen, I've watched a ton of basketball, all right? It don't matter. Even if this wasn't the Buckeyes playing, I'm, I'm watching that game and looking at this stat line. I'm I'm like this. Are you serious? Mm-hmm. Watching that game. So listen, it was it, it was just a tough watch to see how that game was called down the stretch. It was ridiculous. Um, but it is what it is. Whatever you guys want, it's over. It's a W in your book. But you cannot tell me after watching that game, it wasn't no suspect calls. It absolutely was. So I just wanted to hit that hit y'all with that before I answered the question my, about my expectations. <laughs> I completely agree with you, by the way. Forgot to put B. Yeah. Moses' logo up for this whole time. I apologize, B. It's <laughs> I, just, all good. I, I just got it up there now. Um, it's all good. But yeah, anyway. I mean, I, you can jump in and respond to what I just said before I go into my expectations if you want. Oh, no, I, you're right. Uh, I, I, You know, it makes college basketball unwatchable sometimes you know uh it it's you know as i was i didn't get to watch a lot of our state band i gotta admit when they went on a two nine two nine stretch i stopped watching i just gave up like okay i can't mm-hmm. watch this anymore and it wasn't the fact they were losing it was such, such uninspired basketball yeah and or collapses at the end by the way i i can't believe jake got this team to stop collapsing at the end right that exactly. was a, i mean how, what other uh what other reference do you need at that point it's like they were it didn't matter they were up by 12 and with three minutes ago you're still clutching your pearls like i don't know right. man. <laughs> right. run. um and then what happens is uh you get jake dealers like illinois would answer we'd answer right back you know it wasn't yep. it, it wasn't a, a team it, even though we were getting screwed by the refs so honestly the game itself was a testament to jake's and the team's toughness in my opinion yes. they were getting screwed left and right they kept battling back. Yeah, they didn't get it done in the end. I don't care about Kirk Herb Street. No excuses. I'm sorry. Sometimes there's things out of your control that are just unfair. You don't you yeah. don't like it, but tough. Uh, it wasn't like a 20 to 18 foul discrepancy. And be like, okay, there's a couple right. bad calls, but that, 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 I mean, when you're talking double more than double the foul calling, I mean, come on, you know, and yeah. not some of those were obvious like uh, charges, and you were calling them yeah. blocks. I don't want to hear it. Then you you, you can't tell me you know ball. And can't tell me all those were blocks. That's just ridiculous. Yeah, um, it was bad. It was bad. So uh, I know we're jumping way ahead on that question, though, about first year. But I'm like, now I'm kind of excited again about this is part of why you, you let a guy go in the middle of the year. So you get the fans some hope. Like, okay, we are going to move on. Because I, I right. we all knew Holtman would be gone at the end of the season. But we were just like, okay, well, you know, who are they going to get the guy? And we would never even seen Diebler get a shot to try to prove himself. So Diebler would not have gotten a job. There's no way. And we yeah. might have struck out on a Dustin May. We might have struck out on uh, 
a, a guy from Creighton, a kid, Doug McDermott. Uh, yeah, we, we would strike out on all these names, and then what are you doing, right? Then you're going with a guy like Jake Dealer or somebody else who's unproven, you, or you're getting a guy from Gardner Webb or something like that you just don't know right. about. So honestly, it's possible this is the best outcome we could have hoped for because maybe the program's in a position where we couldn't go get a Dustin May. What do you think, B? Yeah, I mean, I think all that makes a lot of sense, man. Dominoes falling certainly affect think how things go. Um, and there were some people like, why would you fire him in the middle of the season? Because it was necessary. Yeah. I mean, it's he like it's it just it wasn't working, man. You know, and and Hopeman, he brought in some recruits and you know, a top five recruiting class. You know, it kind of gave you a glimmer of hope. But then he doesn't play them. <laughs> right, right. So like it was pointless because he didn't even play them, but um, but yeah, it just it was just time. So with that said, thankfully, Diebler was able to step in and prove himself. And now we have signed our guy. And so as far as the expectations go, I think the fair and reasonable standard for next year is to be, in my opinion, based off of the roster that should come back mm -hmm. top five in the Big Ten as far as challenging for a Big Ten title. Top That's five. Fair. That's fair. Um, and then um getting into the NCAA tournament with a respectable seed. I would say uh, at worst, a six or seven seed at worst. I had that in my head, six or higher. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, see? See? Brothers from another mother. Exactly. So that's my standard for next year. I, because of everything I just said, like I think there's no reason why they shouldn't with, with what they're bringing back. I know they lose Key. I know they lose Jameson Battle. Um, not that Key was, you know, so great. But you, you get my was point. very key in their success. <laughs> ah, that was too easy. That was low hanging fruit. If uh, you low ever hanging, had. but I grabbed it. You know, you know yeah, me. I'm no, not very I, athletic, dude. I had to grab what I can grab. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think I think we'll be all right without his finger guns. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, Bruce Thornton, um, Akpara, Gale, Roddy Gale, uh, Scotty Middleton. He's a good player. Akpara's nice. I yeah, like he Akpara. is. I think he he's a little unpolished in some ways. He doesn't lack athleticism. He's never going to be a great offensive threat. I mean, he just isn't. But th his defense is so nice. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, he he's not. And listen, he needs to work on his post game. Yes, he's he he, you know because he's obviously he's not a fifteen foot shot ten shit uh, ten shot guy ten foot shot guy. But he needs an off season because he's been trying to back guys down. And he's just okay at it. Yeah. He needs to polish he is not, that up. Greg Oden, he is not. <laughs> not at all. Um, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, Akpar needs to work on his post game if he's going to keep posting up. Uh, but anyway, we got a good uh, group of guys coming back next year, man. So I think those are the standards, and I stand by it. I agree. I think top. I I'll even go higher. I think top three to four in the Big Ten. Just I mean, I mean, mm -hmm. just a little bit yeah. higher. I I just think they have such an experienced roster coming back. You got to believe they can challenge. Uh, maybe get a transfer for a, a big guy transfer to help out yeah. maybe, but um, you know, not to be a star, nothing like that. Just a guy who can come in and be a body and play good defense, maybe get a bucket or two, but um, Akpara is obviously they're going to be the guy there next year and he should be. Um, yeah. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see where they go for, but I agree. And then a six or higher seed, you should challenge for the big 10 tourney. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, they need to be in, the top four teams in the big 10, they have the program to do it. Yes. You know, I mean, I'm, we're not unrealistic. We're not saying natty. We'd love to see one in our lifetime. Don't get me right. wrong. I would cry. If I saw one, I'd be like, Oh my gosh, I never thought I'd see one of these. Right. Uh, and Matt had is so close. So close. Um, but <sighs> yes. Yeah. Don't, oh man. Oh, six was such bad luck, man. Running yeah. into that Florida team. I was getting everybody back. Literally Goodness, brought everybody man. back, everybody, and they all played in the NBA. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> that was yeah, that was bad, but and yeah. So, it is what it is. Brandon, uh, tell them where they could find you, brother. All right, so my socials: B Moses thirty uh, at on our Instagram, also B dot Moses on Twitter, B Moses thirty on Twitter as well. Buckeye Sports Talk with B Moses um, on uh, Facebook, and I'm sorry, I messed up. Buckeye Sports Talk with B Moses on IG too. Don't do the B Moses 30. That's my personal page. I will not accept your request. Go to the like Buckeye Sports Talk with B Moses unless I know you. Um, and then I just hopped on TikTok too. But I got to get that pro a profile. Oh, man, you're, I, you're I, I, a I Chinese in. spy. <laughs> I caved in and did the TikTok. Um, and then lastly. What about the band um, TikTok? What are you doing? <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm, I'm trying to squeeze every you know bit of juice out of it before they get rid of it, I guess. Um, but I'm also on Buckeye Scoop. My my pods are uploaded to the Buckeye Scoop platform. Um, I will be hopping back on there soon um, to to really ramp up my content and things like that. I'm going through a little bit of a transition right now, but once I get back, it's going to be what, like what kind of transition next level. Are we talking? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> cut that edit that edit that no nah, keep yeah. that keep that no nah. <laughs> but yeah so that's where you can find me all right buddy hey man it's always great to have you and we got to do this more often especially throughout the off season we got to entertain each other because there's not going to be a lot of news coming into july yes whatnot but we got spring practice and football coming up right now going on uh yeah. honestly i want to bring you back to talk tony alford what happened oh there. yeah oh i so. got a lot oh hoo, hoo. yes let's do that <laughs> All right, we got to find some time to record there. We're gonna we're gonna get that off off camera. We're gonna get that on. So yeah, guys, for sure. Go follow B B Moses. I'm gonna put all the links in the in the uh, in the description. Check him out. Got great takes. He runs Facebook. Nobody challenges B Moses on Facebook. Nobody. I tried for like a hot minute. I said this ain't gonna work. B's got me beat. Is what I'll leave you. I'll leave the king alone. <laughs> so, um, man, you're the king. I ain't gonna lie to you. You're the king. Uh, all right, right guys, we ground. Absolutely. Uh, if I can <laughs> edit one in, I'll do it. Um, <laughs> so, appreciate y'all. Like and subscribe to the channel. Helps the algorithm. Helps us grow. We're going to try to continue to bring uh, free content. You'll see uh, B. Moses at Buckeye Scoop. Of course, you'll see us here, right here. Ohio State Football with Scarlet and Great right here on YouTube. Appreciate you guys, as always. Goodbye. God bless. And, of course, B, take us out. All right, y'all. Appreciate y'all watching subscribe like like he said do not go away from this until you do that do it now appreciate y'all go bucks go bucks baby <laughs>